Massage therapists or masseuses. Have you ever had a session turn steamy with a client? How did it go down? Story one. Oh, I have a story as a client. I used to live in a great city located in Southern California, and across the street where I lived was a massage parlor that ran out of an old historic home. I used to frequent as much as I could afford, and things were great. Or so I thought. I had never been to a masseuse before then, and thought big tubs, showers, and champagne was normal since it was the only point of reference I had. After each session I had, the ladies frequently asked me if I needed anything else or wanted to extend. Being very budget conscious, I'd say, no thank you, it was great though, so I'd get dressed and go home. On my last occasion though, things just felt off. She had me flip from my stomach and massage my quads and let her fingers drift a little and would ask me if I wanted anything more, but I refused. As we finished, she asked me one more time if I'd like anything else, but I declined. A few weeks later, I'm walking home from work, and the police are all over my street. They were busting the place for being a known brothel, so I tiptoed back home and waited for them to come to my house and bust me. But thankfully, that never happened. Story 2. My mom is a massage therapist, and she has worked at several chiropractic offices. Oftentimes, if you're good enough and trustworthy enough, the chiropractors will give you the keys so you can see clients on the weekend. I once had to take an Uber to her work when she was scheduled to massage this one guy who was married and new to the U.S. He had been sending messages to my mom, which made her question his intent, but chalked it up to him not speaking a lot of English. I get a call from her telling me to Uber to her place of work as soon as possible. Apparently, the guy had sent a message with this code phrase that in the massage world means things are going to become sa- So I'm the first to arrive. My mom gets there and tries to downplay the situation to make herself feel better by saying things like, well, maybe he just didn't know what that meant. I could be drawing a conclusion that isn't true. He has a wife after all. A man comes in with candy and flowers and sees me sitting in the chair, really confused, hands them to my mom. She massages him, he pays her, gives me a sideways glance, and leaves. Story 3. Former esthetician here, not a masseuse, but I performed waxing on all parts of the body, so I certainly have a story or two. So there's the Brazilian wax, which is everything gone from your downstairs, front, and back. Salons have a male version they cheekily like to call the manzillion. I've had a number of these, and without fail, when it comes time to take the towel away and start, there's at least a semi-chub going on. I'd explain that this happens with everyone, as people aren't very self-aware. They just know they're out, there's a lady, and they're just happy to be there. I'd then place my first strip of wax, let it set, then rip, and it would be like letting the air out of a balloon. Strangely, I never got any phone numbers. Oh, and to do your butthole, you have to be on all fours. Story 4. My mom's a masseuse, and she says there's a lot of instances where clients try to make things but she never reciprocates, but it can get pretty nasty. One time she told me that a dude asked her to massage down there, and she refused, so he grabbed her boot and just kept his hand there for a while, and my mom didn't know what to do, so she just kept doing her job. There are also instances of people calling to make appointments and ending the call with like, do you guys It's probably because they think they're being subtle. Other than that, there's a lot of unnecessary sex. But my mom just thinks that's funny. Edit. When it comes to mo I'm not talking about a regular one. There's a level of that in most of my mom's clients, and it's not a big deal as it happens. My mom's immune to it by now. What I'm talking about is like a couple of times people mo so loud that the entire store hears, and sometimes their dick will go up, which happens more often than you'd think, and say something that's the equivalent of, are you going to do anything about this? And when my mom is like, nah, they tip her terribly. Everyone who gets a massage and mo you guys are fine. Most of my mom's co-workers see it as a compliment to their skills. Eh, it's really unsettling to know that your mom, as a professional masseuse, has to face such uncomfortable situations with clients who cross the line. It's important to maintain a respectful and professional atmosphere, and no one should be subjected to something like that in their workplace. The fact that she's able to continue doing her job despite these challenges speaks volumes about her strength and resilience. Story 5. 
All right, so I used to work at this massage in Florida. It wasn't anything fancy, but it did the job. And we had a couple of regulars that would come in maybe once a week. So this one regular that always asked for me came in one day, and we started the usual small talk while I was preparing my things, and he says that he just recently got out of a really bad marriage. Our massage place does not do happy endings, but I have given a hand job to a client before. So this guy isn't bad looking, maybe 7 out of 10, good job, nice car, and he always tips nicely. So towards the end of the massage, he asks if he could get extra. I was confused at first and said, you can always get shampoo or go in our massage chair for an extra dollar. He said, no, I mean, can you do something extra? At this point, I knew what he meant and I smirked. So he flipped over to lay on his back and face me and I went to whisper in his ear, only extra thing I can do is cut off your tool. After that, he was silent, and after the massage was done, he got up, got dressed quickly, paid, and never came back. <laughs> story 6. I have a different side of the story. I was about 15 years old when that happened, and it still gives me the creeps. After a car accident, I was assigned a massage therapist to massage my shoulder, since it was injured. Nothing else, just my hand and shoulder. So I come to this session, and I see this really young guy waiting for me. I asked him, can I keep my clothes, and he said that I should be in my underwear. Already felt weird, but whatever, I carried on. So I lay on the table, and he massages me, when suddenly he starts massaging my back, then my lower back, where I already felt super uncomfortable at this point, and then he pulls a bit of my underwear. And think of the fact that his hands were really oily. He slipped his hands right in between my ass. It was almost the end of the session, and it didn't last long, but I was so shocked that I froze. I dressed up and I went to the reception to cancel any sessions with him. I didn't report the a incident. All the receptionists said, what went wrong? The old ladies love this guy. You'll make one happy by giving your space. Edit. Yes, I didn't report it, nor did I tell anyone. I kept on lying to my parents that I am still going there. It took me around two hours to even go to the reception and say that I will not continue. Also, this happened years ago in a small city in one of the European countries. Nobody would have believed me anyway. They would have said, no bruises or anything else. The kid is imagining everything. She just wants to ruin the life of a young massage therapist. I am not sure, but can suspect that he did this for other clients of his, since the receptionist also mentioned that he is not popular among young people. Reply 1. I had this happen while on vacation in Florida. I was too shocked to say no. He was so subtle, I kept telling myself it was an accident, even after multiple inappropriate touches. I heard a clock tower go off and managed to say something like, Oh, it's already so late, I have to get to a movie with my son, or something like that. Left feeling horribly violated and so weak for not saying no. Called a massage therapist friend who told me that guy is a creep and to go to the police. I wish I never had. That experience was honestly worse than the creep. Story 7. My wife had a male client who, after the session, decided to please himself when she left him to allow him to get dressed. She saw he had jerked off on her massage table and had gone through a lot of tissues trying to clean it up. So the salon issued a warning on his account to remove all tissues and towels from the room once the massage is done. My wife said it was the funniest thing when he came in again. After the massage, she calls the front desk and two girls come in and take everything out of the room. He got dressed fast and left in shame and never came back. Story 8. I had a very sweet female client face up and was massaging through her neck and occipital muscles at the base of her skull when she leaned her face over and kind of pressed her cheek into my forearm and sighed and nuzzled against me. She's just someone who totally zones out during massage, so it wasn't overtly sad. It certainly was an unusually intimate gesture. She snapped out of it when I adjusted myself away from her cheek, ASAP without being jarring, and blushed with immediate embarrassment. Other than that, I have a few clients, male and female, who make oddly noises, but no other obvious signs of a With some of them, I'm prepared for the worst when I ask them to turn over onto their backs. I think some of them may be getting more out of the treatment than I intend, but nothing untoward has happened, although we have had some people email and phone us to ask us if we do that kind of thing. 
If I wanted to jerk people off for money, I could do that without going through three years of school and paying annual professional dues. My spouse, who is also a therapist, had a teenage male client of hers reach his hand out to touch her thigh while she was standing next to the table, and she politely and firmly shut him down. That's about as bad as it's gotten so far. It's quite disconcerting when clients don't appreciate the professional nature of massage therapy and instead exhibit inappropriate behavior. The experience with your female client, although seemingly unintentional, emphasizes the need to keep personal and professional boundaries intact. Story 9 Okay, so I'm a massage therapist, and I was working out of a gym, and the guy asked for a 30-minute massage on his legs and abs because he was a runner. Nothing unusual about that request. So I finished massaging his legs and massaging his abs. I pull down the sheet to his hips so his abs are exposed. He is completely naked under the sheet, not unusual, but the sheet is covering his privates. As I'm massaging his abs, he reaches his hand up to scratch his nose, but when his hand goes back down, he accidentally pulls down the sheet to expose his junk. I'm not bothered, I just pull the sheet back up over his junk and keep working. Then the sheet accidentally slipped down his hip again, exposing his d again. I cover him up again and keep massaging his abs, as that's what he asked for. Then it happens again. So this time I grabbed the sheet and tucked it under his hips and kept working without a word. He didn't try again. I continued as if nothing had happened, finished the massage like a professional, and sent him on his way, and thankfully, he never came back. Edit. I apparently didn't describe this clearly enough. The guy's penis was resting in the up position on his lower abs, inches from where I was massaging his abs. So when he exposed his d multiple times, it became clear that he was hoping that I'd massage his d instead of his abs. Story 10. This reminds me of when I was 17 and job hunting, when I already ran my own business, but wanted another job just to keep busy. Saw an ad for a masseuse with training, so I go and apply online. Sent a headshot, and I get a call to come in for an interview. This gentleman has me meet him at this huge old plantation-like house that doubled as a B&B. &B. Did the interview, and then he starts saying some weird shit about having personal clients and how to make them happy, etc. Mind you, he knew I was 17. He told me he had clients who he personally would send me because they're regulars and tip extremely well. Basically, I was being hired as an underage prostitute and he thought I wouldn't realize what was happening. When he told me I'd be working commission plus tips, I got the whole idea. I told him I'd let him know and hightailed it out. Hence, I reported the place after about a week of him harassing me to start working because he showed his clients my headshot and they really wanted to meet me. He was arrested for child prostitution for hiring a masseuse who was only 15. Story 11. My first ever remedial massage was when I was 15. It was to treat a groin strain. And, as is typical with 15-year-old boys, any hint of attention in the area caused me to get super hard. As soon as she noticed it, the masseuse handed me a little wastebasket and a box of tissues and said she'd be back in five minutes before leaving the room. So I had my wank and cleaned up, and my boner was down to half mass by the time she came back. But I was 15, so the moment she started rubbing the area for treatment, it all sprang up again. This time she just ignored it as best she could. Story 12. I am a massage therapist, and I have been in the field for about three years. I have been asked out on dates a couple of times, and I declined. And that's about as far as it goes, generally. I've seen my fair share of physical excitement through the sheets. It's quite common when they relax. But there was this one man who said he'd tip me real good if I gave him a really deep tissue massage. He was so pompous, I beat the snot out of him. He never really said anything, but he would literally wag his raging ar at me, and I took it as a clear sad message, even though he didn't really do anything inappropriate. He tipped me $40, and I felt kind of dirty. It's unfortunate that you had to deal with a client who behaved in such a suggestive manner without explicitly crossing the line. Receiving the tip after that experience must have felt uncomfortable, but it's important to remember your commitment to providing relaxation and healing. It's commendable that you've maintained your professionalism despite facing such challenging situations. Good job! 
Story 13. Hey, I can finally contribute to this. I've been a registered massage therapist for seven years now. There have been accidental slip-ups and whatnot, which I just brush off. But one time a girl asked me to hop on the table with her, which was back when I was in my early years of practice. We didn't cover much of this in class, by the way. So totally oblivious, I said no, it's unethical and should have stopped the massage there, but I kept going as if nothing happened. Finished the treatment paid and never saw her again, thankfully. My boss got pissed and told me to see the cops about it, since you never know what can be said in the case of male versus female. So I did see the cop, and he laughed at me. Maybe not the happy ending you reader expected, but this doesn't happen very often. Still, fun work though. Story 14. I have been an RMT for a little over five years now, and people definitely make comments, but if you set firm boundaries, people normally take the hint. That being said, I had one client, who I had been treating for nearly a year, start to get very friendly towards the end. He came in one night while it was only me and the receptionist and requested I only treat his quads for the whole hour and use very light pressure, a very weird request. I refused to do that, convincing him to add in more areas, which he reluctantly agreed to. About 10 minutes into the appointment, he suggested that I get on the table instead, and he massage me. I declined to say it was not appropriate, and he then asked if I had a table at home. I said no, and he said that was okay, we could just do it in my bed instead. Again, I refused and said that would not be appropriate at all. This is when I should have ended the treatment. He then went on to tell me that once I get married and have kids, I can say goodbye to intimacy, then asked me, do you like having s- Do you like c- in your mouth, a- or put- I damn near crawled out of my skin and was shaking and scared. This man was easily two times bigger than me, and I was alone in the room with him. I ended the treatment 20 minutes early. He didn't seem bothered, and told the receptionist to ban that m- from the clinic. I saw him a while later at the mall with his family, and I had an anxiety attack. I am not a person who suffers from anxiety. Stay safe out there, fellow therapists. Story 15. If you've ever taken an opiate for extended periods of time, or ever had sex on one, you know how hard it is to come to the pinnacle of physical satisfaction. Whenever you come off of them and are in withdrawal, you become really sensitive. Once I had a girl at an HA meeting ask me to blow on her nipple through her shirt. If I hadn't been in rehab myself, it probably would have escalated to more based on her reaction. That was an interesting life experience. Old Buddy was in detox for heroin, and they had a masseuse come in to give massages. He was on day three off and started to feel things again and got a deep tissue. He said she put her elbow into his leg and he let out a grunt and jizzed all over the blanket since he had maneuvered his boner to the top of his shorts. She apparently asked him to roll over a little later, and there was the clear-as-day cum stain. He said she was 40, but all witnesses that day claimed she was 80. Apparently, they both handled it well, and she just said, let's get you a different blanket. Please leave your story down below in the comments. I would absolutely love to make a video about them in the future. And also, don't forget to like and subscribe. And until next time, peace.